Good evening. Coming up tonight. The Thomas Cooper Library has been slated for renovations. Plus, Don Staley and company are headed to the Sweet 16. And more about Gamecock Entertainment's latest event this Tuesday. All that and more tonight on Student News at 7. Live from the Kennedy Greenhouse Studio. This is Student News at 7. Good evening, Carolina. I'm Grace Berkery. And I'm Clarissa Meyer. Thanks for joining us tonight. The Board of Trustees has approved renovations to Thomas Cooper Library and the demolition of McBride as a part of USC's new master plan. Some of the proposals in this plan have been approved to enter phase one meaning studies will determine funding and what changes need to be made. For the library, there are plans to modernize the building and make it more interactive and welcoming for students. Additionally, book removals have been ongoing to prepare for the renovations so there can be more study space for students. As for on-campus housing, the replacement of McBride would add about 500 beds, a steep increase from its original 260. These proposed changes, along with others, need to be approved again later to move on to phase two. A mental health carnival arrived on Davis Field last Thursday. SGTV reporter Aaron Smith has the story. To wrap up Spring into Self-Care Week, the University of South Carolina's Healthy Campus Initiatives hosted a mental health carnival on Green Street to promote mental health amongst students. The carnival was equipped with build your own flower bouquets, refreshments, and bouncy house games. Healthy Campus Initiatives had support from many organizations such as Student Health and Wellbeing, Student Recreation, Student Disability Resources, and Mental Health Resources that are open to students. Healthy Campus Initiatives set this carnival up to be a space for students to relax and take a break from the pressures of class. You take care of a lot of other responsibilities, a lot of other people, so it's very important to just take a time during the week and just take care of yourself. And if that means just coming out, getting some flowers, or hey, I'm done with my homework, I want to jump on this little bouncy house, bouncy castle, then that's what it is. Many students stopped to take advantage of this event. Students like sophomore Valentin Parachi say events like these help reach students. It's really nice. It's also nice to check on the students because it can be stressful, like having classes and everything. With flowers and some fun, Healthy Initiatives is advocating the importance of mental health on USC's campus. For SGTV, I'm Erin Smith. Thanks, Erin. If there is one sound everyone in Columbia has heard, it's the trains. Whether you hear the blaring horns in the middle of the night or walking to class, it is a staple in Columbia life. Although, some might be excited to hear that changes are coming sooner than expected regarding these noises. In 2022, a plan was announced over the reconstruction of railroad crossings across downtown Columbia. A member of the Transportation Committee predicts that some parts of the process would start as soon as this fall. The reconstruction goals are to implement quiet zone technology at certain crossings. The project would alter crossings from Raleigh Street out to Colonial Avenue downtown. An annual event held by the St. Baldrick's Foundation to fundraise for cancer research occurred this past Saturday. Many met at the Craft and Draft in Irmo to step in and make a small but strong impact. Some came to shave their heads in solidarity with the cancer patients, while others donated to the foundation. One family whose son was diagnosed with stage 4 infant leukemia says there is still work to be done. They say, quote, there needs to be more funding, there needs to be more research, there needs to be more done for these children for their treatments. With volunteers, families, former patients, and more coming out in support of, the, of this event, St. Baldrick's raised over $61,000. I think having this event not only have such a strong impact, but being close to the campus and just like the Gamecock community allows a lot of our students to go out there and support this cause. I know that a lot went out there. Yeah, it's been so great to see how long lasting this tradition mm -hmm. has been and just how many people came out to fundraise and $61,000. That's a lot. That's a lot. a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, coming up after the break, SGTV sports reporter Lauren Susi and Isabella Davis will give us the latest in sports. You don't want to miss it. 
Welcome back, everybody. I'm Lauren Susi. And I'm Isabella Davis, here to give you the latest in sports. Women's basketball is headed to March Madness Sweet 16 after a blowout win by 47 points against UNC Chapel Hill Sunday at home at Colonial Life Arena. The number one Gamecocks defeated the North Carolina Tar Heels 88-41 to, to advance them to the Sweet 16. The ladies outscored the Tar Heels 43-10 to during a 14-minute stretch in the first half. Going into the break, the Gamecocks were up 56-19. to Sophomore Chloe Kitts was 3 for 4 shooting with 10 points in the first half. Malaysia Fulwiley, the SEC Tournament MVP, scored a game-high 20 points, 4 three-pointers and 9 rebounds by the end of the game. Fulwiley started the game with a behind-the-back layup. Following Fulwiley's layup, Tessa Johnson made consecutive rainbow threes. Camilla Cardoso returned to the court following her one-game suspension for fighting in the SEC Championship. Cardoso led the starting lineup with 12 points and 10 rebounds. Tessa Johnson also scored 11 points. Johnson and Phil Wiley combined for seven of the top-seeded Gamecocks' nine three-pointers during Sunday's game. The Tar Heels held the fewest points in their 81-game NCAA tournament history. This victory for the Gamecocks extended their program record with their 59th straight win at home in the final game of the season at Colonial Life Arena. The Gamecocks will play either number four seed Indiana or number five seed Oklahoma Friday in the Albany One Regional for South Carolina's 10th straight Sweet 16. This women's team is simply dominating their opponents in the game and it is incredible to watch. The margins and the scores are incredible this season. It is, I agree, Lauren. And it's just so cool being able to be a part of that. I was at the game yesterday and the energy was just crazy. It was so exciting and it was just such an energetic first half to the game I think I've ever seen before in basketball. We were just scoring points off the board like crazy, so it yes, was awesome. Everybody is so excited for this women's team, for sure. Definitely. After a spectacular and historic season for Gamecock men's basketball, the road has officially come to an end. Lamont Paris and the boys' team traveled to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to face the Oregon Ducks in the first round of the NCAA tournament. From the very beginning of the game, South Carolina was unable to grasp any kind of lead or find a rhythm. The final score was 87 to 73 Oregon Ducks. This unfortunate and unexpected defeat eliminated South Carolina in the first round. While fans were saddened by the loss, head coach Lamont Paris made sure to emphasize the team's incredible success this season. Despite being eliminated, the Gamecocks ended the season with a record of 26 to 8 and a 13-5 record in the SEC. The record ties the 2016-2017 team for the most single-season wins in program history at the University of South Carolina. In a post-game interview, Paris expressed his thoughts on how frustrating it is the season ends so abruptly. Paris saying, quote, it hurts to lose, and it hurts more when it is the last game of the year. And it hurts the most when you're surrounded by a group of guys that is a really, really special group of individuals, end quote. Though the boys' season ended quickly, South Carolina men's basketball generated tons of buzz in the media all season, leaving fans wanting more and already creating anticipation for next year. However, the roster will look a little different next season. Announced just earlier today, Michi Johnson told On3 Sports that he intends to enter the transfer portal. South Carolina men's club lacrosse won 12-3 against Alabama's Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa this past weekend. Anthony Romano started the game off strong for the Gamecocks and scored the first goal with a lefty rip. John Gerald brought in the second goal for the Cox with an unassisted bouncer. For the third goal of the game, Casey Hurley found Matthew Mayer in front, bringing the score 3-0 Cox. Mitty Colin Jung rolled through the middle of the field and crashed one in the net for the Gamecocks. Carson Healy found Max Rittenmeyer on the broken clear as the, as the Crimson Tide remained scoreless. Jake Fox found the back of the net with a ripper to bring the score 6-0 Gamecocks. Donnie Ryan shook the defender and the defense to find the back of the cage and made a goal for the Gamecocks. Lefty Fritz Clark ripped the top corner to mark the ninth goal for the Cox. Harry Carswell scored a goal for the Gamecocks off the back of the net, and John Gerald made a lefty sweep to bring the score 10-1 Cox. 
Senior Luke Cosentino recorded a ground ball for the Gamecocks as an attackman. The Gamecocks finish the game with a 12-3 win over the Crimson Tide and will play Georgia Tech on Saturday at River Bluff High School. Now the team has really been seeing a lot of these wins recently in the past few weeks and as they're coming back from this away game in Alabama, I'm excited to see if they're going to be able to bring the same energy into this game at home here against Georgia Tech. Yes, that goalie only letting three goals in is pretty cool, especially mm -hmm. against a team like Alabama. I agree. Really impressive. Mm -hmm. And Gamecock softball hosted their SEC home opener this weekend. SGTV reporters Lindsey Thompson and Corinna Porter were there for game one on Saturday. I'm here at Beckham Field where the Tennessee Volunteers just took down the South Carolina Gamecocks 2-1. Let's check out some of the highlights. The Lady Vols beat the Gamecocks over 10 innings. South Carolina started off hot with a run at the bottom of the first. Denver Bryant had a single up the middle, moved to second on a wild pitch, and third on a ground out. Jen Cummings brought her home on a deep sacrifice fly to center. However, they were not able to score again. Tennessee scored in the top of the third. Both teams went scoreless until the Lady Vols recorded their second run in the top of the 10th inning. Jen Cummings led the Gamecocks with two hits on the night. Denver Bryant, Kiana Jones, Carly Henderson, and Carly Shelton also recorded hits. Zeta Pooney led the Lady Vols with two hits. Taylor Panel and Destiny Rodriguez recorded two hits and a run each. This was Carolina's second straight multi-extra inning game after their game against Clemson on March 20th. The Gamecocks face the Lady Vols again tomorrow at 6 p.m. For SGTV, I'm Lindsay Thomason. Thank you, Lindsay and Corinna. The Gamecocks wrap up the series right now at Beckham Field. Coming up after the break, SGTV entertainment reporters Destiny Austin and Haley Brown will lay down the talk of the town. Stay tuned. Welcome back, Carolina. I'm Haley Brown. And I'm Destiny Austin, here to give you the latest in this week's entertainment. Want to see your peers compete this week in a talent show? On Tuesday, Gamecock Entertainment will be hosting their Carolina's Got Talent event. The competition will be held in the ballroom on the second floor of Russell House and will start at 7 p.m. The event will be hosted by USC's very own Jada Samuel, who currently holds the title of Miss South, Miss South Carolina. She will share the stage with 10 students who will showcase their talent. The winner of the competition will be crowned Most Talented Gamecock. With so much talent on display, the competition is sure to be fierce, and the audience can expect an evening filled with excitement, entertainment, and inspiring performances. Columbia's only EDM music festival, the Hidden City Music Festival, is coming back to Casey for a third year on Saturday. Despite controversy over noise levels and fireworks in past years, the festival and the city have worked together to keep the event fun while also imposing restrictions. The festival will be headlined by the Hall of Famer turns DJ Shaquille O'Neal, also known as Diesel, alongside DJs Acraze, Pickup Lines, Name Unknown, Vice Bloom, and Trey Burnett. There will be a main stage, a silent disco cave, gourmet food trucks, and fireworks to wrap up the night. The festival will be hosted at the historic Casey Speedway. Gates open at 1.30 p.m. and the festival will end at 10.30 p.m. Tickets can be purchased through HiddenCityMusicFestival.com for as low as $60 with a student ID. The event is only open to ages 18 and up. Destiny, I think it's so great that the city and the festival were able to work out the problems about the noise levels and the fireworks because uh, um, it takes place in a neighborhood, so makes sense. Yeah, have you ever been to an EDM festival before? I actually was at a Skrillex, uh, Skrillex was performing at this festival I was at, and I was in the mosh pit, so uh, super fun experience. Okay. And I'm glad that uh, Columbia can have events like this because it brings a lot of culture to the area and people. Yeah, I think events like these are important, especially for music lovers, and I love EDM too, so. <laughs> Looking to get a laugh this weekend? We The Ones Comedy Tour will be making a stop at Colonial Life Arena this Friday. The show will start at 8 p.m. with doors opening at 7. Presented by BMN Entertainment, comedians Mike Epps, 
DC Young Fly, Will Duvall, and more will be showcasing their talents to give a night of laughs. The show has no age limits, although it is recommended for ages 18 and up. For those interested, tickets are available on the Colonial Life Arena website and Ticketmaster. Calling all 80s music lovers. On Saturday, REO Speedwagon will be coming to the Township Auditorium. The band is most known for song is most known for songs Can't Fight This Feeling and Keep Loving You. Both were extremely popular in the 80s. The band has a discography spanning from 1972 to 2023. Since performing in 1967, the band continues to release music and tour today with original vocalist Kevin Cronin and longtime members guitarist Dave Amato and drummer Brian Hitt. The show will be opened by the band Live On, whose sound is a mix of contemporary country and 70s country and rock. Tickets start at $38 and can be purchased through Ticketmaster.com. That's all your entertainment news for tonight. After the break, Clarissa and Grace will return to finish up tonight's news. Stay with us. A new bar and restaurant will be opening its doors on Main Street in early April. Named Prohibition, the restaurant is originally a popular Charleston spot, but it is now set to open on the corner of Main and Taylor Street. The food will be led by chefs Greg Garrison and Annalisa LaPetra, offering an array of veggies, seafood, meat and poultry, and dishes prepared in their custom pizza oven. Additionally, for the bar scene, Direct, bar director Jim McCourt says original drinks will be created for the Columbia location, as well as fan favorites from the Charleston location. A local bookseller is looking to bring her online businesses, Liberation is Lit, to life in a physical store in Columbia. Taylor Simon, the creator of the bookstore, focuses on selling used books that cultivate community and foster activism. She says reading is political and wants her store to be more than finding your favorite titles. Simon hopes to build a stronger community and help groups not only gather to read, but discuss and learn about different social issues. With this, she wants to create a stronger space around all books, political or not, saying, quote, come for the books, stay for the movement. Simon sees the power in literature as it can help people find paths to self-discovery and connectedness. Currently, Simon tables at markets such as Soda City, raising money for a liberation fund that goes towards the storefront. Thus far, she has raised $3,000 towards her $75,000 goal to kickstart the storefront off with one year's worth of rent. Tonight, the night sky over Columbia will be aglow with a worm moon. If you've never heard of a worm moon before, it's, a name, its name comes from the farmer's almanac, referring to beetle larvae and other creatures that emerge from hibernation in the spring. If you happened to be awake around 3 a.m. last night, you might have caught a glimpse of the fully illuminated worm moon. Additionally, this morning, sky watchers were, cre were treated to a partial lunar eclipse, with the sun, moon, and earth almost fully aligned. If you missed the celestial show, don't worry, the worm moon will continue to show in the sky for the next few nights. So I did not stay up till 3 a.m. last night, but I did try to go out and take a picture. Um, my phone wasn't really cooperating, but mm -hmm. I tried, and it was really bright. It was, it was pretty. Yeah, I also did not stay up till 3 a.m., but I have heard about full moons bringing some weird vibes, and I don't know how I feel about that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of celestial events going on lately. There's supposed to be a solar eclipse happening on April 8th, so mm -hmm. well, stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for weird vibes. <laughs> <laughs> and that wraps up tonight's edition of Student News at 7. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, X, and Facebook at SGTV at USC. To keep, up, to keep up with all our content, be sure to also visit us online at SGTV at USC.com. For SGTV, I'm Grace Berkery. And I'm Clarissa Meyer. From all of us here at SGTV, have a great night, Carolina, forever to be.